Welcome on board the beautiful P&O Azura. In this video, I'm going to explore the ship deck by deck and also to give you some hints and tips for when you sail on her. Azura was launched in 2010 and is a modified version of a Princess Grand Class ship. So in some areas, the layout feels like it was imported straight from the late 1990s. And I'll be letting you know where I think are the best places to go. Should you be looking for some excitement or maybe just to relax? And just like my other ship tours, I always start at the top. And on Azura, it's deck 19, the sky deck, which is found at the aft of the ship. If you're looking for a quieter spot to catch the sun, this is probably the best place on the ship. And for all you golfers, if you need to practice your swing, you can do this up here too. And for those with energy to burn, there's this ball court area for football and basketball. And directly below is the Planet Bar on Deck 18, Ocean Deck. The Planet Bar is a great place to chill out with a cocktail. And it's open between 5 p.m. and late into the evening. This is one of the quieter bars on board the ship with a pianist who plays a selection of classical hits. And directly below on Deck 17, the Sun Deck, is the amazing Epicurean Restaurant. This is the first of the four speciality dining options on board the ship. It is open between 6 and 9.30 for dinner. However, on sea days, it offers this amazing afternoon tea from 3.30. This really was an absolutely amazing experience. Highly recommend trying this out. And now we're outside and we have these amazing views of the ship. And this is one of the more secluded areas for sunbathing. And from up here, you get a great look at the retreat, which is the adult only area on board the ship. And one thing for sure we're on Piano Azura, there are definitely enough sunbeds. Although, as you can imagine, it's the ones around the pools which are the most popular. And this is the retreat the outer only area. Obviously, this area is much calmer than the main two pools, which can be very noisy at times. And now we're heading down to deck 16, Aqua. There is a small charge to use the retreat, which you can either pay daily or for the duration of your cruise. However, the Oasis pool is available to all adults, regardless for if you paid for the retreat or not. The Oasis Spa can be found on Deck 16, Agua. And the Oasis Spa offers a wide selection of treatments and relaxation options. Here you can have a facial or a massage, you can use the Whirlpool Spa and Thermal Suite and also go to the Beauty Salon. And also here is the gym with a wide selection of equipment looking out with stunning views. and a choice of fitness classes is also available. And now we're heading outside and going towards the very front of the ship. And if you just look down here, you can see the bridge. There's definitely something quite magical about standing at the front of the ship and just seeing the ocean in front of you. And now it's time to head back towards the middle of the ship. Breakers Bar is one of the busiest on the ship, especially on sea days and for sailaways. And from up here, you get some fantastic views of the coral pool below. Now this is one of the most popular areas on the ship, so if you like a sunbed here, definitely get here early. Three, 
and on my sailing, this midship area was one of the most popular on the ship. Which looks down on the aqua pool below. The sun loungers here are tightly packed in close together. So you're quickly going to know everybody else that's seated around you. And one of the main reasons why this is such a popular location to sit in the sun is to watch the sea screen. And if you fancy playing a bit of shuffleboard, well, this is the location to do that. Is shuffleboard a game that you've played? Please let me know in the comments below. And this is the reef, which is the kids clubs aboard the ship. There's a variety of options for the children of varying ages. There's a nursery for the under two, the splashers for two to fours, surfers from five to eight, scubas from nine to 12, and H2O from 13 to 17 year olds. And behind the reef is this outdoor area with this small splash pool. And now leaving the reef area and heading back towards the centre of the ship. Here is the deck game Coits. I've never understood it. If you do, please let me know below. And now it's time to head down to deck 15, which is the Lido deck. Where both of the main pools are located. The Coral Pool is the smaller of the two. And this was a great place to hang out by the pool. And this is the Fincantieri sign where the ship was built back in 2010. And one of the main attractions for this pool is the live entertainment. With the house band poles who are banging out some 80s classics. There are some great poolside options for food and drink too. There's the coral bar, the poolside grill, the poolside pizza and the aqua bar. I highly recommend the pizza as a perfect poolside choice. This is the aqua pool, which is the larger of the two pools. And there are two world pool spas at each pool too but they were very popular. And if you want to get in one, you better be quick. The buffet on board Azura is where the ship really starts to show its age, as it's just way too small for this size of ship. The layout of the buffet was small, the selection was fairly limited, and the quality of food was so-so. However, due to its size, it was nearly always rammed. And this was especially true at breakfast. So try and get there as early as you can if you'd like to eat. I will leave a link here for my extensive food review video, in which I show in greater detail the food on board and the fantastic speciality and main dining rooms. One of the good points about the buffet is that there was plenty of seating. And outside, and behind the buffet, is the terrace bar and pool. Where you can buy some ice cream while sitting in the sun. And this is the pool at the very aft of the ship. During the evenings, part of the buffet is turned into the beach house, a speciality dining option. There is a small cover charge to eat here, 
although there are a couple of items that come at an additional charge. Decks 8 through 14 are the main cabin decks. There's a laundrette on each deck containing cabins and is open between 8 and 10. Laundrette are completely free to use. You can even ask in the shop for free washing powder. And this is where you can find the iron and ironing board if you need to press your clothes. As you're not allowed to bring your own iron on board. This is Promenade on Deck 7 and the Playhouse Theatre. This is the main destination for the shows and entertainment on board the ship. With musicals in the evenings and lectures during the day. Even though our sailing was fairly full, there was no need to book. On the left hand side is Clifton, where you can buy your fine jewellery. And on the right hand side is a speciality dining option, the Glass House. It is curated by P&O food hero, Ollie Smith. The food here tended to be smaller and lighter dishes. It also served the best beer on the ship, the P&O exclusive Jolly Ollie. And this is the main atrium. And this is the Blue Bar, renowned for its cocktails, champagne and caviar. This bar felt a little cut off and was really busy. Past the lifts is the Eternity Shop, which sells a selection of makeup and fragrance. The Malabar is a popular lounge with quizzes during the day and music in the evenings. Due to the layout, I would definitely suggest getting there early if there's an act that you'd like to see. Just past there is the photo gallery, should you wish to purchase any of the photographs you've had taken on board. And this is Sindhu, the Indian inspired speciality restaurant. The food here was absolutely incredible. If you like Indian cuisine, I can't recommend this highly enough. And when I wasn't particularly enamoured with the choice of beer, they even went down to the glass house to get me a pint of Jolly Oli. That's the type of service that I really appreciate. Don't forget to check out my food review for more on this incredible restaurant. And Manhattan is a New York inspired show lounge. Here you'll get to see a variety of acts from cabaret, musicians, magicians and comedians. Sight lines here aren't too great and you know what I'm going to say next. If there's something you really want to see, you better get here early because this place gets packed. And finally on deck seven is the promenade itself. Which can be a fantastic place to grab a drink and sit down and watch the world drift by. Or even somewhere to get your steps in with some stunning views. And this is the atrium on deck six. This is wardrobe, which mainly sells ladies' clothes, accessories, and bags. Here you can pick up a copy of Horizon, which is the onboard times and events guide. And this is Brodie's, which serves as a traditional London pub. There's plenty of space to sit down and grab a drink, especially during the day. 
there is usually sport being played on the big screen, especially Premier League football. And don't worry if you've missed the big game, because they'll be sure to show it again and again. And if you fancy it, you can even play some pool. But it's in the evening where Brodie's really comes alive. From music, quizzes and video horse racing, there's plenty to do. I was half expecting a meat raffle. And as this is the most lively place in the ship, it's extremely popular. And by now I think you know what that means. And to the other side of Brodie's is the casino, which is pretty compact to say the least. And with a selection of table games and slot machines, this can get very loud in the evenings. And good luck if you're going to test the fates. And this is the lower level of the Playhouse Theatre. And back in the main atrium is the reception, should you need anything or have any questions while on board. And for those wishing to get married or renew their vows, they can do so here. And this is another shop for selling jewellery and watches. And your duty free tobacco and alcohol can be bought next door. And just past there is the peninsula, which is the first of the three main dining rooms. Which on sea days is open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The food here was excellent and I highly recommend you check out my dining video. At the after deck six is the Oriental Restaurant, which was for those who book club dining. Though they'll be eating with the same people at the same table every night. Explorers on deck five is where you want to go if you want to book a shore excursion or even a future cruise. And if you know you want to cruise with PO again, they do have some great offers. And if you're looking for sweets, snacks, and PO merchandise, then Chronicles is the place to visit. If you're interested in purchasing some fine art or maybe just going to take a look, then the White Wall Gallery is for you. My favourite piece was this of David Bowie. And also on deck 5 was my cabin. This is a sea view cabin and I'll leave a link to the full tour below. And for all you coffee lovers, there's the Java Cafe. which serves your favourite Costa coffee. Which also serves a selection of muffins, croissants and Danish pastries. As always, lots happening at the ground floor of the atrium. Music, dancing, and the welcome on board from the captain. Good evening, and welcome on board the best ship in the fleet. Lovely to see you. Have you had a nice day? I think the other thing in the sky is called the sun. Plenty more of that to come in about five minutes. And the third of the main dining rooms is the Meridian. And as it was on the same floor as our cabin, it was our go-to for breakfast. Though we did have a couple of nice evening meals in here too. And on deck four is the place you definitely don't want to end up because this is the medical centre. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you'll be informed of any upcoming videos. Thank you.